ご覧のスポンサーの提供でお送りします。What is up, dudes and dudettes? Welcome back to the channel again. It's me, of course, OG, aka Osaga Go here. And today we're gonna be talking about the latest Netflix original animated series called Kulipari Dream Walker, which is the second season in the Kulipari franchise. The first season was called Kulipari An Army of Frogs. And just so you know, there is no Season one of Dreamwalker, An Army of Frogs, is the season one. And for some reason, Netflix decided to do two separate listings for these shows. So there's two different listings in Netflix when you search for Kulipari. And Army of Frogs is the first season you want to watch, and then you watch the Dreamwalker. Why is this? Maybe Netflix decided, or maybe it's the producers, Splash Entertainment, and Trevor Price. Or there was a la- lawsuit after the first season between Trevor and Splash Entertainment regarding some royalty stuff, which may have led into changing the name. Then again, before the first season was made, back in like 2014 or something, there was a different animation studio planning to do the show, and it had a very different style actually. It was not Flash, and it was also called something different back then. and... Then you have the two compilation movies, which are on Amazon, Google Play, and iTunes, which are called Kulipari Mercenaries and Kulipari An Army of Frogs. So it's kind of <laughs> it's kind of confusing a bit, and well, it is what it is. But this is the second season, okay? That's what you gotta understand. And all of them are in Netflix, no region blocks, every region available. And so. Also, one thing that I have to criticize Netflix for is that there's zero promotion for the show. This cartoon is pretty good in terms of Netflix's standard. It's one of the better originals that they have on their platform. There's no single tweet from Netflix, not a single trailer video from any of the Netflix's YouTube channels, and really, there's not a single trailer. In YouTube in general, which hasn't been ripped out of like Vimeo or something. So, kind of bad promotion there, and nobody knows about this show really. And I kind of find it by the accident while searching on you on Netflix. So,、uh, it's kind of sad because I think this show is really good. So, but let's finally get into the season two. And season two is three episodes shorter, so it's only ten episodes, which was kind of nice because when you do the second season, you don't have to do the character introduction arcs. You don't have to build up Daryl up again and make him a new story. It actually doesn't focus that much on Daryl this season. There will be a lot of new characters, especially his, you know, younger brothers and sisters who are now grown up. So there's、uh, maybe a five-year, three-year age gap between, or not a, a time skip in between the season one and season two because they're now all grown up and they have their Kulipari powers and now they're in training and they're this new、uh, Scorpion character is one of the、uh, called Stinger and he's one of the good guys and he will be also kind of this new character he's kind of like Anakin Skywalker vibes I'm getting a bit of that sort of a vibe from him he's a good guy but then he's like this dark side in him because he is like a descendant of Marmu to my understanding and also he Well, you know, he's a scorpion. So scorpions are always kind of、uh, good or bad,、uh, more or less. And this season will have a new villain, which I have to say is interesting at the one point. But he was a bit underwhelming. I will not reveal his name because <laughs> I don't actually remember the name. That was、uh, it started with D or something. And he is this sort of giant lizard dude who rules this like.、Uh, I think it was called the Hidden Wars or the Hiding Wars, which was this great war between Daryl's father and the Scorpions, which took place in this one place, and and now that place is the location where this new enemy is has set it up his like empire. And there's a lot of like a Mayan type of like art style and like influences here with the skulls and like the lizards and the geckos. So th- they kind of went this sort of like a Mayan tribal type of a look, which was cool. I'm really into the Mayan culture and the Incas. It's very fascinating, and the, I mean, obviously, probably some influences were from the, you know, Warhammer,、uh, the Lizard Men. Obviously, they were kind of associated with the Aztecs and everything. So I, I guess there's some influences from there, and they have essentially captured this. 
a gecko or frog who has been adopted by this gecko tribe and they come to Daryl and his new home to essentially ask him to, you know, retrieve him from the prison. And there's this sort of like a gladiator arena in this new city. And there's a lot of like refugees from the Marmoose forces and from the spiders. And, you know, you have all this like interesting geopolitics going on and new races. And that's something that I always liked about Kolipari and what I praised it on the first season was the aspect of world building. It's actually very rich. You have this history behind it. And then you have the prophecies and like the Kolipari legis- legends. And then you have all of these like factions and they're not, it's not so black and white. You would always think in cartoons, it's why is the good guys and the bad guys. No, there's a lot of like neutral parties like the mercenary lizards who will have a lot of play in this season as well. And there, there's just not like a one side of force. Everybody is kind of like tribalistic in that sense. And Daryl is always obviously kind of trying to bring everybody like under the one banner he doesn't want to have war and it's it's all cool like that and there will be betrayals there will be interesting revelations about the uh because we thought that certain people died in the first season but apparently they didn't and there was all of these interesting aspects which was revealed in the season two and one thing i also have to say is that the animation quality went up this season. I think definitely there was a more detail, the animation. I don't want to say that in first season it was sloppy, but you could clearly see, oh, this was done in Flash. You, this is like a Flash-like animation. But in this season, I think there was an element of smoothness or maybe the frames were more clearer. I don't know how to put it into context of words in the technical terms, but it looked better. It looked smoother, it looked more professional, everything about it was just more high Q, uh, higher quality. And overall, the plot of the second season was pretty good. I think that it kind of used some of the similar tropes of like rescuing people from cages and, you know, prisons, kind of like it did in the first season. So the story was somewhat similar, but I think overall it was still, you know, something new. There were a lot of new characters that were introduced and a lot of characters also got character developments. Some of the people kind of disappeared or were put into um, cameo role, as we would put it. Some people were kind of degraded from side character, like G. He he was Daryl's best friend, but he had almost... Well, he had a very limited role this season, and that's fine. You gotta change up and swap up the cast a bit, okay? So, this was all interesting to me. And overall, second season was pretty good. And you could always, almost argue that it was better than the first season. And going towards third season with these new build-ups and these, these affiliations and new, these new teams that have kind of risen up, or clans, or tribes, whatever you want to call them, or empires... It's going to be interesting. But I think the villain that we had this season, I thought that this was going to be stronger than Marmu. But nah, I think I think this new dino guy or lizard or chameleon, I don't really know what we're going to call him, was kind of underwhelming as a villain. I mean, he, he had a good voice actor and he had a good presence, but he didn't seem strong. He didn't seem capable. He was this, like, ruler. He was the, he was the Jabba the Hutt, okay? You know, he was just... <laughs> He was sitting on the throne most of the time, and he did no fighting. He just had this lower, uh, low, b- large army, which did most of the job. So, uh, you know, and Marmu at least was some like menacing, and so was like, you know, Commander Pigo and Jara. But I mean, with with all the criticisms aside, I think it's a great show, and I'm wishing for season three. I just don't know if that's gonna happen because I mean, Flash animation, Flash animation has to be cheaper to do than most of the animation shows out there but i'm just afraid that because there's such a low level marketing for the show nobody's talking about it i have done you know my share of hashtags obviously but uh i just i just don't see like if you don't promote your shows netflix i'm talking to you i don't know like how you're gonna justify renewing the show if nobody's gonna see it or know about it it's a great show but just nobody knows about it and that's that's the problem that they have to solve of like how they're going to promote these shows because you have the Netflix Kids and Families channel and they don't even show trailers for most of the animations that they release. Why? Why? 
this is what the channel is for, to promote your fucking stuff and make you money. But I don't know if you don't want money. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my problem, but I, I like good shows and I would like see like to see more Cooly Pirate promotion. But I don't have much else to add. Season 2 was solid. It didn't get boring. I remember the first season maybe had like few boring parts that got kind of stretched out towards the end. I didn't feel anything like that in, in this season. And like in the last season, if I recall right, the, the last episode kind of showed those puzzles kind of moving on and like these new things that might emerge these new nations and scorpions especially and what's going to be this kind of like this giant cliffhanger episode essentially like showing things are in motion and things are going to go down in the season three but that's pretty much my take on the whole thing and i really recommend you go watch the show Check out my season one review. Will be a bit better introduction on what the show is exactly about. Don't be a stranger to the animation style if it's too weird looking for you. It's actually pretty decent, and I think the show also shows you a decent level of depth. It's not like totally mature or anything like that. It's 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 pretty like a heroic show, you know, a true adventure show. It doesn't like focus ninety percent on the comedy stuff, you know. It's it's, it's, it has a serious side to it and you know the character relationships feel real and genuine and I think there's a good you know world build up as I praised it on the first season review and I will do now uh, the world build up in this show is really good and I think it's going to be expanding more and more as the time goes by but thanks for watching subscribe for more and we will see you guys next time cheers next time